it's actually been a while, so uh, welcome back to the stream. And um, interesting topic today. So Big Fish Audio got in touch with me and asked me if I may take a look at Mojo 2, Virtu's new horn library. And I said, well, why not? <laughs> So today we are taking a look at Virtu Instruments Mojo 2. So I haven't been streaming in a while, so please let me know if there are any audio issues, if something strange or wrong or whatever. Uh, got my coffee ready to go and hi Loki. Glad you're on board. And let's dive straight in. So, Virtu is distributed by Big Fish Audio. Mojo 2 is their follow up to their first Mojo horn section. It retails at $499.95 right now uh, at Big Fish Audio. And, well, it's a horn library. And we will get into the nitty gritty details in detail pretty soon and um well let's close this for now and let's go mojo 2 these are the instruments over here that are included alto sax baritone sax um bass trombone clarinet flugelhorn french horn piccolo trumpet soprano sax tenor sax trombones and trumpets both muted and normal. Uh, loaded up the alto sax here, or let's just load it again to do the initial state as it comes out of the box. There is nothing on my faders right now, uh, so this is the sound straight out of the box. <laughs> Oh, that's a little bit quiet there. And actually, I need to give me a little bit more volume. So, okay, so what do we have here? Uh, that is the beautiful now white screen GUI that contact allows. Um, and Virtu makes pretty much use of that with some of their other libraries as well. So it's definitely recommended to have some screen space to run this properly. Um, down up here we have, uh, no, we get to that later. Let's first start down here. So the red keys down here are the key switches. You can see what is selected down here in the corner. So let's just give it a short play for a moment. Staccatos. Staps. Bends. Runs. Runs up. Welts and crescendos and faults. So that's pretty much all there is in terms of articulations, but there's a bunch more. So for each articulation, you have a dedicated settings page. Let's start with global. So volume, panning, uh, key noise overlay. When you turn that down, you get no key noise and You hear these clacking of the uh, valves. Is it valves? Oh, not sure. Um, so that is uh, the global settings page with setting up the velocity curve depending on your playing style, 
round robin settings, and then you can tweak the individual articulations, like uh, release sounds on the sustains attack and things like that. Uh, for example, let's try that out on the sustain. Attack accent. I don't hear that much of a difference, but um, that might be because I hear my keyboard clacking uh, louder than the initial sound. Anyway, um, staccatos and the release obviously controls. Steps, uh, questions, swells, crescendos, are tempo sync? Yes, they are. So you can, let's go to the swell, uh, swells, swells. Uh, from one beat to 16 beats. So that's nice. Four bar swells. So for example, if you need two bars, There we go. Two bars swell. And crescendo pretty much the same. For the crescendo, let's do a two bar crescendo. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I am on crescendo and I, oh, I'm still on swells. Okay. Three, four. Ah, that was seven beats. <laughs> okay, but you get the idea. So it's tempo synced. Two, three, four. Yeah, that's pretty much working. So, um, yeah, each individual articulation can be set up here. Uh, the faults, for example, you can determine the fall length. <laughs> So three options there. Um, the rise to hit. There is nothing you can do about it. Octave runs up, octave runs down. All these are... Not really sure whether these are tempo synced or not. Let's try that out. So when we are on 80... So there's no change. So these octave runs are not synced in any way. So, uh, but that's not a problem, I guess. So let's bring that to 100. Um, next page is the mixer page. And this is where things get really interesting. So first of all, you have uh, a full mix. Let's go back to the sustains here. You got a close mic. You have a near mic. Let's turn that on. Pretty nice sound there. And both combined. And we got a room mic. And back to the full mix. So that's cool. And this is where things get really interesting. So they included an ensemble setting. So right now when you initially load, you have solo patches. Um, but you can pump up the section size. Um, so solo, two players. And you can determine the humanize, uh, how much they're humanized and the stereo spread. So when you put them all together,
four players. And actually that sounds pretty amazing in my opinion. Six players. Up to ten players. And when you humanize that all the way and spread them out, then you have them. And when you imagine from there to there. Are they recordings or just modeling? I have actually no idea. Uh, given the file size, uh, maybe they are two different recordings and they treat the, I have no idea what they do under the hood there. Um, but it sounds great. So <laughs> I don't actually really care if it's actual recordings or modeled or emulated or whatever. It works. So it sounds pretty cool. Um, now we have an effects page, EQ, uh, tape separator, all that stuff, all the good stuff that you either can use within the GUI or you can mix it later on in your DAW and in the mixer. You can set up the key mapping. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't been all the way consistent with the key switches. Would would have been nice. Sometimes it jumps around like an octave. Um, but overall, uh, the key switches are the same for all the instruments, which makes it cool when you have different articulations and play in the trumpets and to the key switches and then you copy it over, put it an octave down in the trombones, for example, and the um, articulations are all the same. So that was pretty cool. And back to performance. And what's really cool is are these four buttons up here. So you have different sound settings. So the modern sound, I guess that that it's kind of an EQ curve or an impulse response or something that they put on top. So you get this like vintage 40s, 30s sound. And uh, Vintage 2 is kind of taking it to the extreme. Just add some crackle from, from an old record. One thing I forgot to mention, you have legato mode in the sustains. Sorry for going off topic, but Native Instruments is giving Metropolis Arc 1 and 2 for 4 99 Is worth it? Um, I could shoot myself in the food that I bought it at full price like two years ago. But on the other hand, well, that's when it comes out. Uh, in my opinion, definitely worth it. So this price is insane for Metropolis Arc 1 and 2 for 4 99 So if you can afford it, go for it. It's really, really good. So... Um, as I said, sustains, you can uh, switch them to legato playing. And then you have a vibrato mode as well. Unfortunately, you can't really control when the legato kicks in. So, like, you have an initial note, and um, then the vibrato comes in later. That is not possible to set this, at least not the way I found it. You have a simulated legato and a real legato. So there is the <coughs> vibrato mode. Give me a second. <clears throat> Sorry for that. Um, coffee. So um, let's 
try out some of the other instruments. So let's load the Barry sax. By the way, I didn't do a battery save yet, so some of the patches take a little longer to load, but it might help to just save it once it's loaded to be faster next time. So just saving that. Someone asked how the Threadripper is running and uh, yeah, I'm actually really, really happy how it's going and how it's behaving. Really happy. <laughs> So, and as you can see here, the uh, key switches are shifted an octave, obviously because it's a low range instrument. But overall, you have the same controls as in every other instrument. So what I would like to do actually is to save them, uh, resave them to have the key switch range the same in all the instruments. So I haven't done that yet. I would do that later. Uh, bass trombone. Let's take a short listen there. Loading, loading, loading. How you guys been doing? What's up out there in the world? Writing music? Hopefully. Also a bit off topic, but uh, what are you expecting from the upcoming release of Cinematic Studio Brass? Um, hard to say because I only heard the same demos as you have on the website, which sound pretty cool. Uh, I definitely look forward to it and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a stream with it once it's released. So uh, we will see. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> So the shorts are nicely bitey. Uh, so when you have four bass trombones, so it's definitely not uh, orchestral sounding, but that's not the aim of the library. So it's a uh, pop, big band, funk, horn library. Uh, it sounds pretty gritty, which is, in my opinion, pretty cool. Because when you do that kind of music, you definitely need some, some bite and grit in the samples. They even did a clarinet. By the way, I forgot to mention that in the sustains, you can also set the dynamics to a uh, mod wheel. Do the legato and then you get into classic sampling territory. I'm personally more a fan of uh, controlling volume with CC, but uh, with that certain type of instruments like the brass and things like that, it's sometimes better to do it velocity controlled. And the library doesn't react to CC11, so there's no volume setting with that. Just so you are aware. Uh, Flugelhorn. I'm just playing each of these for a little moment um, to get an idea before we actually get into uh, using it. So Flugelhorn. <coughs> And again, the key switch range has changed on this instrument, so it's a little bit inconsistent. Switch on the 
for that one. So, not really nice there. French horn. And again, don't compare that to what you know from the orchestral sampling world, uh, what French horn sounds like. It's way different than... Sorry, uh, way different than... Let's try. Let's uh, turn on CC control and like do a six French horn section. Humanize them a little bit. Don't spread too wide. So a little bit more tech. So the the uh, ensemble mode is really really good in my opinion. Piccolo trumpet. The cool thing about the ensemble mode is that you can, uh, can really build your own ensemble size from from solo instruments in a section to big big band sound sections so that's pretty cool What I would have wished for uh, is, for example, the faults that you can uh, select the fall length with uh, different velocity uh, key switches. So when you hit soft, that you get the short, medium, that you get medium, and when you hit the loudest, the key switch, that you get long. Would have been a little bit more convenient instead of switching it in the GUI. <laughs> okay. Anyone for comedy scoring? Uh, soprano sax. Can't technically compose, but I keep buying instruments and BSTs all the time. Well, good on you. this on sustain and and on CC I mean on legato mode on and then the vibrato mode on and you go into vintage mode
So we will check out the the uh, sound settings later when we have a little bit of a section going on. So tenor sax is not that much of a difference to the alto. So uh, let's give it a short wiggle. Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> How does that sound with a little bit of vibrato? cool so trombone we had the bass trombone already uh, I will check out the muted one in a second and so sorry for the loading times there I should, I should have battery saved that beforehand <laughs> thing that is a little bit uh, random for me or um, in the short articulations and I have to be honest I'm not a brass player so I'm not really sure this is like a restriction with playing the actual instruments that you have various length in the short so sometimes you get these really bitey short notes and we get a little bit lower in the range They are longer, so and not as bitey as in the higher range. So there might be a restriction of playing the instrument, or they just did something in the sampling there. So it's not totally consistent there. Uh, let's check the muted ones. And there we go. These shorts pretty much consistent. So, and last but not least, let's check out the trumpets, and then we go sustain CC legato. Let's take a short look at the effects section again. Saturation, you can, you know, tape saturation. That's pretty cool. Uh, 
So you get a bunch of options to, um, oh, it's nice that you get a little dot below when you, so you know which effect is active. That's pretty convenient. So at least you know from the GUI what kind of effects you have running. So, and next, first of all, let's try out eight trumpets. So that's pretty cool. Um, what we are going to do for now is coffee. And let me actually go back to Ver2 website. So we are going to take a listen to one of the demos because I need to get rid of some of the coffee. Sorry for that. So let's just take a listen to one of the cues and then. <laughs> So this is how it's actually done correctly. So Premislav is uh, an amazing composer and an amazing demo writer. Um, the funny thing is that I am actually not so much into big band and jazz styles. So I just plainly suck at that. Uh, so it's funny enough to check out this library for me. But well, the uh, thing is, if you're not uh, proficient in writing big band music or jazz music and things like that, it's still interesting to see what we can do with it, even when you have no idea what you're doing. So um, let's dive straight in. Um, since I have, I kind of have an idea where I want to go with, like, like maybe something a little bit like an alt rock track, rock track with a bunch of uh, brass there. So let me resize the GUI here. Um, so, well, let's just dive straight in. Uh, we definitely need some drums. There we go. Uh, let's go. Country rock punch. We definitely need a little bit of bass and guitar. That's a good idea to, um, I recently got shredded three, which is awesome. So we will utilize that. 
the shredded three stratos. Mm. Again, huge user interface. So it seems to be a thing now. Uh, let's turn that green. This is shredded. Uh, actually, the brass can be yellow. That was the trumpet. Let's name that already. Um, let's add ABJ or a motor bus. Mo no, let's try a motor. Did I actually activate it here? Looks like. So that's nice. Uh, let's go with the preset here. Finger bass, uh, funk. Now let's go with something more rocky. Modern vintage, maybe? That sounds good. How do you like Cubase 10, by the way? Is running smoothly? It is. It actually is pretty great. Some nice new features, new enha enhancements, and um, I like it. So hopefully that answers the question. It is running smooth over here? Um, so as I said, we take a look at Shredditch 3, the new library. <laughs> rad so and they have some presets um heavy rhythm double tracking power chords <laughs> I mean, I'm not a decent guitarist, but um, a little bit, and this makes my life so much easier. <laughs> Doing some. That sounds really, really good. I can only say that. Um, so we get a little bit of guitar, bass, drums. So that works. Um, let's check out some of the levels. Bring it down a little bit. Keep the brass there where it is. Um, so where do we start? I think 100 is already a good tempo, so uh, I could play something in the drums, but let's just see if we find a nice groove that we can work with. Um, boom, 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 boom. Standard pop rock. Mid tempo, pushy. <laughs> I like that one. Let's go with this. So, actually, let's put it on the grid, please. Thank you. And let's 
fill to start with. Sometimes you just gotta decide. Okay, <laughs> at least let's add in a crash symbol there. There. Don't like the bass sound there, so let's take another one. Okay, let's go with this one. Maybe give a little bit more grit in the amp. Do, 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 do. Okay. Just trying something here. Let's go first. Take the drums a little bit up, guitar a little bit down, and give a little bit more tempo. Well, six maybe. just um, go from there, tweak a little bit around. So uh, let's go with um, sustain, then we go with a power chord here. And give it a little bit of a negative track delay say minus 15, something like that.
something like that. like this No. So, Now we get a loop going on there. Not the best riff ever, but something to start with. Actually, I want to change that. Let's copy that to the base. Get rid of the key switches. We don't need these. So obviously need to cut these down. a little bit minus five
now. little bit of variation there so we got our intro riff so okay let's start with bringing in some brass starting with the trumpets Trumpets and octaves. First of all, get rid of this. And turn it down, obviously. That's way too loud. First up. Let's try the fall there. That's crescendo. Is that the short or the long one? That's the short, okay. Well, that sounds pretty cool. So push them a little bit before. Mm, okay, let's go. Staccato notes. Let's see, either we try the um, steps articulation. Go with a regular sustain. So sustain, I want to control with velocity, and I don't want them in legato. And we want more accent attack. Sound, so the sustains sound very soft. Would love to try, do you actually can layer sustains and staccatos? Oh, these uh, purple keys here are the release samples. Okay, got it. Um, no, the thing is, what I was wondering is if you can layer the staccato and the sustain. But that's not possible. So I would love to have the option to give way more bite to the sustains in the initial like like in the in the um, crescendo. So 
So the stains are a little bit weak in the attack for me to, to achieve what I have in mind, uh, giving them... Oh, I think I just recorded tons of <laughs> I had that activated. Okay. But well, uh, let's duplicate this. Let's duplicate this. And first and foremost, uh, let's make this uh, more instruments. Uh, mixer. Oh, we are on eight. So let's go with two trumpets. And we doubled that right now with the trumpets here. So let's do saxes. And right now I have no idea which ones. Let's go with the tenor, I would say. Uh, tenor sax. So. Uh, full mix, we have full mix going and pretty much should play the same when we just play it back because the key switches should be aligned. Uh, so they are on C0 and the trumpets have them on C1. See what I mean? This kind of sucks, so we need to Bring these down. So. Let's shorten these sustains a little bit and then we listen to them together. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's go with uh, two saxophones as well. Like this. So, adding two trombones here. So we have a basic funk section. Trombones, there we go. Add a big crescendo in the intro just for fun. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, <clears throat> so, trombones. Velocity control, more attack. Staccatos. Actually, turn the release a little bit down on the staccatos. And we are at C0 again with the key switches. So this should mean. <laughs> okay, that works. This is what I meant with a staccato articulation. That's kind of a little strange. First of all, two, please. Two trombones. Okay, here the steps work better in the trombones. Starting to sound like something. So let's open up the mixer for a little moment and put these together in a group. Let's 
sterile actually. <clears throat> oh. Now we can push these a little oh. uh, quick link, please. Now we can push these a little bit and turn the group down. Okay, we got this. Um, come on. Let's go with a different articulation here, like a doit or something. Let's try uh, the run up and do that in time to land on the four. So let's see how that goes. Two, three. Two. Okay, that sounds pretty much in time. Thing is, is that really sync? No, it just works good with one oh six. I don't mind that. Panic! Thank you. <clears throat> How do you separate the different zones in Cubase 10 and Cubase 9.5? There was on the left of the mixer to adjust it. What do you mean? Zones? Like this? No idea. Please specify. So that run does not work there. Um, let's go with a stab. Better short. So let's do them all three. That sounds pretty rad, to be honest. Let's try. 
turn these, these. So now we can duplicate that. This is eight beats. So let's set up the crescendo. Talking about the crescendo, the big one we need. Um, crescendo, let's do that. Eight beats. And bang on the trumpets with the crescendo there. Let's uh, B2. I guess. See if that works. That's cool. Get rid of this and in the saxophones turn the cushion is to eight beats as well. And in the trombones. And actually we need to put down the key switch an octave. And we need to set up the crescendo for the trombones as well. Crescendo eight beats. So I guess later on, yeah, we, okay, we know it's CC28. Um, is it or did I put it that way for whatever reason? Here's 29, <laughs> okay. Interesting. So uh, there's none. Okay. Um, it's. I think it's a good idea to MIDI learn the uh, <clears throat> length of the crescendos and swells to have a possibility to change them without running back into the GUI. Anyway, this is what we have right now. Compression here on the brass. Um, and actually, let's do the swell or the crescendo just six beats or seven beats and on the four we do a fall uh, so crescendo seven beats and on the trombone as well crescendo seven beats so that way we can Put a fall on the last note there. All the trombones as well. well. That should give us. And the crescendo is a little bit loud compared to the falls. So either we pump up the falls a little bit. That's what I would do. Turn sax, 
trumpet uh, false pump them up a little bit and trombone as well false a little bit louder please so pretty nice um let's try something here Is it C0 or C1? Well, the key switches. C0. Well, we start off with regular sustains. do like a little bit of a chorus line Put a C9 in there. Uh, 
Okay, what do we have? Um... So that should get us started for chorus section. Do, 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 do. So let me just do quarters here. Okay, so now uh, let's just do some chorus drums or some pre chorus. Let's that sounds good. Put that there and uh, let's do a fill beforehand. Go with this one. So So now let's um, go with a little bit of the brass section there. So. And this is the moment where we need to um, tweak the crescendo timing so actually let's learn the media automation here for let's go with 22 so we set 22 go there okay so I'll see the 22 and I can not show both at the same time but when I change the value here you can yeah you can see it changing here so we had this on 
seven beats beforehand. And on this end here, I can now change that to, for example, three beats, depending on what I need. So I can change the length, whatever I need on the spot in the track. So for example, um, I set it now to two beats. That's not working <laughs> because we need to change. So, okay. So now <clears throat> we go with um, and for example, I would need how much? Panic! Why is that? I have no idea. Um, okay, midi hang. Uh, da, 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 da. So I'm hearing something in my head. Now back to. notes again okay need to make that one longer so we need to set this up to five beats five or no four no three sorry Okay, let's go with sustains here. Again, and now with four beats. There we go. The cool thing is that I just need to do this once and I just learn the MIDI controls on the other instruments and I just copy over and everything that I do here will be uh, the same in the other instruments. So that's cool. So that's nice. Let's see if we. So first and foremost, we are going to relearn the crescendo timing. Remove, learn. 
There we go. And in the trombones, we do the same. Crescendos, remove, learn. There we go. <clears throat> um, now we can copy that over. Here we had 52. Two, please, and here as well. Fifty-two. So that should give us the same crescendo for this one. these down. That's why it didn't work. Okay, let's see how these sound together. Are there any reverbs right now? So there's, um, that's the sound out of the box and it's the mixed mic position. So we could, uh, actually I want to try this. Uh, let's see when we change the mixer to the close mics on the sax as well. Mixer, not full, but close mic and on the trombones as well. So now we have the close mic only. just uh, need to do something here I'm just hearing yeah let's try this um. Do this and um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I just put that there to copy it in place. And just on the lower one and on the shorts. 
<laughs> Sorry. Uh... The visuals of the stream got a bit laggy. Let's check this out. Ah, we lost some... No, we didn't lose any frames. Um, hmm, strange. Oh, yeah, we lost some frames. Um, well, anyway, I'm nearly th nearly through. Um, let's copy that over and bring that an octave down as well. Let's see. So pretty much <laughs> short little tune there. Um, let's do a little bit of mixing. Um, so um, with the drums, let's do a little bit of parallel compression. Let's solo them. Okay, we need 
two. And you need the pre. Uh, by the way, the little drops out you're starting to hear there, not from my system, but because of streaming at the same time. So I'm sorry for that. Um, Uh, what? There we go. Uh, let's put that on minus eight. We don't need the voice over there. Please go, 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 go. There we go. So, and we don't need the inputs here. We can turn these off as well. We can load a strip preset and check out if we find something nice there for the base. And I guess to have a little bit of a better performance, we might need to change. Uh, samples. So uh, that might be a little bit better. Just doing some final compression on the brass section there.
And then let's add a little bit of room. Add an effects. So let's go with um, vintage verb. So on solo vintage verb, and let's see. Rooms, snare room, large wood room. Let's try out this one 1.33. Sending that. Let's start out with minus 10. That sounds pretty cool. I think that works. Finally, there we go. Um, watch your speakers. We are just slamming a mastering limiter on top uh, to give it a little bit of edge. And um, I think I'm turning down the lows a little bit. So, um, yeah, overall, nice uh, brass library. Um, as I said, I'm not the big band writer per se, so uh, don't expect me to write this, but for, for such a little rock tune with a brass section in the background, that sounds pretty good in my opinion, especially uh, given the dirt that's in there. What I wanted to try actually is before we take off uh, is change the brass section to the retro sound see what that makes of a difference and give it one more listen guess they can be a little bit uh, quieter or a little bit loud but overall yeah that's a uh, moto brass uh, I could do more uh, if I wrote like really a decent uh, big band piece or something like that but that would like take me a week so uh, that might be a little bit long for streams so I went for the short version um, Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I will be back regularly soon. Uh, so next one, I have a few libraries lined up and uh, developers that contact me about checking out their stuff. And uh, I try to get back regularly, like once a week. Uh, I will let you know beforehand on the CWBI Facebook page when the next stream goes live. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and see you next time. Bye bye.